Welcome back to our next lecture on point estimation and parameters and sampling distributions. Now let's get into standard error. Given a point estimator or capital theta hat, the variance of the point estimator is denoted by this. So the variance here would just equal sigma squared over n. So we talked about this formula before with sampling distribution. It's kind of the same concept where we now have a distribution of many different samples and their point estimates. Okay, so my standard error this time is just the square root of my variance. So standard error is just the standard deviation of these point estimates. So sigma over the square root of n. So note here that the variance of the point estimator may be calculated using estimated values, in which case the error is referred to as the estimated standard error. So that's why we care about the standard errors, that it incorporates the fact that these are estimated values. So this is also important because if we have multiple point estimators with different variances, then variance now allows us to further characterize which one is better. So let's look into that. Given two unbiased point estimators, theta hat 1 and theta hat 2, the estimator with the smallest variance is called the minimum variance unbiased estimator, or the MVUE. So this is often referred to by statisticians because we care which one has the smallest variance. The point estimator with the smallest variance is the one that you're going to want to choose to represent your population. The MVUE is the one most likely to produce a point estimate equal to the actual value. And the MVUE is also important when it comes to distributions. It's been shown that for a normal distribution, the sample mean is your MVUE. So that kind of saves you the step with a normal distribution of having to guess, do I use the median? Do I use the standard deviation? Do I use the mean? Uh, so with a normal distribution, your sample mean is going to be your MVUE. So in practice, an unbiased estimator is not always available. So when we use a bias estimator, it's useful to be able to characterize the error associated with the point estimate. So there are different types of errors associated with biased point estimates as well. So we have the standard error and the mean square error. So the standard error, once again, is going to come from my variance. And the mean square error, however, this time now incorporates my bias into it. There is one more type of error, which is called a bootstrap standard error, but we're not going to get to that too much in this class. Usually this is done by a computer or some kind of program. The reason we care about the bootstrap method is it allows us to assign some degree or measure of accuracy to each of our sample estimates. And these then are usually measured in terms of like bias, variance, confidence interval, or some kind of other error. So my mean square error, or my MSE, provides a measure of the variance and the bias of a given point estimator. So how close it is to my mean and how spread out the data is. So my MSE of my statistic equals the difference between my population value and my statistic quantity squared. Or more simply put, we just have the variance plus my bias squared. So keep in mind, that the MSE of an unbiased estimator is just the variance because this value right here would just be equal to zero if it is unbiased. So if it's biased, however, then you have to incorporate that value into your equation. So we can use the MSE to compare the performance between different estimators in terms of the relative efficiency. So basically, we're going to take the error of one, so the MSC of one statistic, over the MSC of the other statistic, and that will be called my efficiency. So in general, if my efficiency, or this ratio of the two, we call it a relative efficiency, because it's one relative to the other. If the relative efficiency is less than one, then we're going to want to use the statistic in the numerator, because then that would infer that that variance or that value is smaller. If it is greater than 1, then you would want to use the 1 in the denominator. You can remember all of that, or you can just remember you're going to want to use the 1 with the smaller mean square error. Okay, so note that if it is unbiased, then my efficiency would just be equal to the variance of 1 divided by the variance of the other, because we don't have to incorporate bias. So this is a nice shortcut if you have an unbiased estimator. Okay, let's look at how efficiency works in an example. 
Suppose that theta hat 1 and theta hat 2 are unbiased estimators of the parameter theta. We know that the variance of 1 equals 10 and the variance of the second equals 4. Calculate the relative efficiency of the two estimators based on your answer which estimator is better. Okay, so let's first calculate my efficiency. So my efficiency is just 10, so the variance of the first divided by the variance of the second. And notice here we just have a zero because these are both unbiased, so there's no bias to incorporate. Okay, so that then simplifies to be 5 over 2. So here the relative efficiency is greater than 1, so we would take the value in the denominator or we would take the smaller variance. Another way to just look at this would be to take the smaller variance of the two. In general, we always want to take the value with the smaller variance because that means that my values are not spread out as far as they could be, that my point estimates are relatively close to one another, so that helps us predict for our population parameters because they're all relatively equal to one another. So another way to say that is that my estimator two or my second statistic would be a better option since it has the smaller variance. Let's look at one more example incorporating our mean square error. So there's a program called Minitab out there that's a statistical program where you can pretty much put in any statistical problem or statistical question into it and it will pump out an array of numbers or an array of answers for you. So here this is a Minitab output and it tells you a bunch of information. So it tells you that I have a random variable x, a sample size 16, a mean that I'm supposed to calculate, a standard error of the mean which is 0.159 and a standard deviation that I also have to solve and the sum of 399.851. So once again we're supposed to calculate the missing values. So I have an n equal to 16, a standard error of the mean which is 0.159 and a sum equal to 399.851. So it's up to you to remember what sum means. It's just the summation of each of my individual values. So that's what sum would equal. So my mean would just be my sum divided by my sample size. So my mean would then be 24.991. I would then find my standard deviation using my standard error of the mean formula. So I would just plug in my standard error of my mean, the square root of my sample size, and that would give me my standard deviation. So I'd solve that and that would give me 0.636. So this is it for this part. I hope you are a little more clear on point estimations.